Hello everyone, this is Corey Mitchell with TradeThatSwing.com and today we're going to look at the average historical stock market returns. We're going to look mainly at the long-term returns. This basically means if you were invested in an S&P 500 type ETF with low fees such as SPY or VOO, these would be the returns we could expect over a long period of time. One thing I wanted to note is that the average investor tends to vastly underperform what the indexes do. So JP Morgan, someone who would have some access to what people's accounts are actually doing, did a study between 2001 and 2020. And during this time, the S&P moved up 7.5%. This is without dividends and the average investor only made 2.9%. So there was a couple things going on potentially. Maybe they just weren't all invested in stocks. They might've had some in bonds, which bonds didn't perform quite as well. But we can see the average investor even underperformed an entirely, if the, all their money was in bonds, they still would have underperformed bonds. So they just barely beat inflation and they underperformed stocks, bonds, and pretty much all other equity classes. And this is likely due to overtrading, thinking they knew what they were doing, but not knowing what they were doing. So if you're just an average investor looking to get long-term returns, it's really best to just ride out the ups and downs in the stock market, even though we are gonna have those big years where it goes up a lot and we have those years where it goes down a lot. But over the long-term, the returns are great if, if you're invested in the stock market. So this just shows trying to trade in and out, in and out, in and out is probably not the best if uh, you don't know what you're doing. So over the last 150 years, the return including dividends, and we wanna note that big difference there. If we don't include dividends, your return's about 4.5%. If you include dividends and you take those dividends and you reinvest them back into your portfolio, so basically you're taking those dividends and just buying more S&P 500 ETF, then the return is 9.7%. So that's 100, 150 years worth of returns. That's your average. Over the last 100 years, it's a little bit better, 10.4%. Again, you notice the big difference there. If you don't, if you just take your dividends out and spend them, you're going to have quite a bit less per year than if you reinvested those dividends. And that's just the compounding effect over time. Last 50 years, about the same, 10.5%. 30 years, pretty close to that 10% again. Last 20 years, still hovering around that 10% mark. So even though we do we know we have up and down years it still averages out to 10 percent a year so you're going to have a couple down years you're going to have some up years but overall this is what we end up with shorter term we can have bigger fluctuations because each year becomes more important over the last 10 years this was as, at the, as of the end of july and all these figures are calculated based on monthly average prices so it's not going right up to the end of July, it's taking the average price of all July 2022. So 13.2%, that was a pretty big year, uh, or pretty big decade for stocks. That's a, that's a nice high return overall. And short term, we're not gonna worry about those as much, assuming you have somewhat of a longer time horizon, 10 years, 20 years, uh, we can hopefully assume that that 10% a year which has been pretty dominant over the last 150 years, will continue to hold, although there's no way to know that. We're looking at historical data. The average has been 10%. Whether that continues into the future, we don't know, but it's a pretty good benchmark to go off of. So the stock market doesn't always trend, though. There are going to be periods where we have sideways movement. Most of us were alive during the either the dot-com crash or the financial crisis of 2008 2009 and we can see there was a period here where if you had invested back in 2000 it took a while for you to recover those losses 
So it dropped, came back, dropped again, came back. So this was about 13 years of what we could consider overall sideways movement. Now, I generally encourage people, if you're an investor, just invest a little bit each month. That way you would have been buying all the way down here and you, you would have had a much quicker recovery. You would have been buying a little bit on the drop and you would have been buying as the price recovered. So your recovery point would have actually been the halfway point of this 13 year period. So quite a bit of this time, you would have been seeing some nice gains, plus you would have been getting dividends. And then eventually we had a very nice run after that. So the same thing has happened multiple times before. If we go back to the 19, late 1960s, 1970s, same thing. Basically one big drop, we recovered, nice big drop again, and then we recovered. Big drop, big drop, recover. Same thing, even though it was a much bigger initial drop, the same thing happened back in the 30s. We had this massive rise, then the big sell-off in the late 1920s, rallied, didn't quite get back to the peak like we did in these other ones, but then we also didn't sell off right to the bottom either. So basically two big drops and then the recovery. If we even go back into the early 1900s, big drop, recovery, big drop again, recovery. Same thing happened in even earlier in the 1800s, big drop, recovery, big drop. So we, we have these periods where we tend to have two pretty sizable drops, which during those times stocks move sideways for about 10 years and it took a little bit longer almost 25 years for the stock market to recover after the great depression and this massive decline but again if you'd been buying throughout this time the recovery would have been much quicker you would have started to recover once this was recovering about halfway up this range as opposed to waiting all the way till it made new highs so as investors even though there are these big declines we can still make good returns even during these periods and we'll do very well during these big trending periods. So that 10% average encompasses all of this. It encompasses the big declines and it encompasses the big rallies. And that's what we wanna keep in mind with our big picture thinking of what returns could be if you're just invested in an S&P type fund. To give you some perspective, what are the biggest up and down years in the S&P 500? Well, if we go back to 1928, there was the biggest up year was 46.59%, 46.59%, and that was just after the Great Depression, so or as we were recovering from it. So sometimes from these big declines, you get the biggest rallies. So it can be your timing has to be perfect if you're trying to step out and then step back in because if if you miss one of those big moves you could be in for you know your your statistics could be much different than what the long-term averages are and as we discussed you don't want to be one of these people who's trying to avoid all the bad times and only get in for the good times and what usually happens is that you miss some of the good times as well and that's why you end up with the low return So biggest up year or biggest down year was 47% in one year in 1931. Some of the other notable years, just to know, just, just, if you're gonna be holding uh, S&P type 100 fund, these are some of the returns you could see in a given year. You could see a 40% drop, a 30% drop, a 23% drop, 2008, a almost 39% drop. Pretty significant. If you're watching that, it, it is gut-wrenching, but we also have to remember that we have up years of 45%, 38%, 31%, 97 was 31% rally. And you can see the dispersion here where we can see slightly more up years than down years, probably about 60% up years, just eyeballing it, and 30 to 40% down years. We have some that are pretty much flat you could say where it's just a minor loss or a minor gain we have some pretty big uh, downside years but when you look at this this is a almost 90 year time span we're looking at here from 1930 to 2020 and just beyond there's a few big down years but not a whole lot and there's a lot of just kind of average up years and then we have a few really big up years and 
this is what the typical dispersion looks like. So when we say that the stock market is up an average of 10% per year, that doesn't mean it's just going to go up 10% a year and your $1,000 portfolio is going to be worth 1100 next year and then 10% on that the next year and then 10% on that. No, it's uh, going to go up and down, but over the long term, it averages out to 10%. But you could be up 30% one year, down 20% the next, up 15% the next. So that's how it's going to go. And so hopefully that gives you an idea of what stock market history shows us about the average return of stocks. And then you can decide how you want to invest and how you want to take advantage of that. And if you're interested in learning more about investing, how to invest throughout the year, uh, what you should be doing to manage the portfolio, what funds to invest in, you can always check out the Passive Investing eBook. It is available on TradeThatSwing.com if you go to Trading Courses Stock Investing eBook, and 15 bucks, and it basically runs you through how to invest in stock ETFs and what to do with them, how to manage them, when you should be buying them, which ones to buy, and we can just see the, the progress over time of doing this by making that 10% per year. And also goes over how to look, how to pick your funds based on the fees that they charge, comparing them to other funds. So basically a very simple guide to get you started if you are interested in investing and just taking a passive, what we call a passive investing approach. And that's just we're buying these index ETFs to make that 10% per year over a long time horizon. This book uh, just lays it all out for you. Very simple to follow. So until next time, happy trading.